Hello everyone, this is Alex from Bad Decks Play Badly and I'm going to show you off this week's deck. It's called White Blue, or Blue White, whichever one you fancy, World Slayer. And as you can see here, it's based around this card here, World Slayer. It's a 5 mana artifact equipment uh, with 5 to equip. But whenever it equipped creature deals combat damage to a player, destroy all permanents other than World Slayer. So that's everything. Their lands, our lands, our creatures, their creatures, everything except World Slayer. And you think, well, it's not very good for our opponents, but it's also not very good for us. How do we play around this? So the whole point of this deck really is to build around it where after World Slayer has caused damage, uh, we are in a ad advantageous uh, a position, really. So we'll... I'll let you see what you think as I go through it, and you should be able to understand. And we'll start at one drops. Just four pathway exiles, just removal. Early game, we're gonna need it. So, self-explanatory, really. Our main way of getting World Slayer on the battlefield is quest for the Holy Relic. Whenever you cast a creature spell, you may put a quest counter on the enchantment, and I may remove five quest counters from it. I may search my library for an equipment card, put it onto the battlefield, and attach, attach it to a creature I control, then shuffle my library. So the idea of this deck really is to play five creatures once a quest for the Holy Relic is down, attack with one, well, all of them, and whichever one isn't blocked, I'm going to sacrifice quest for the Holy Relic and put World Slayer on it and destroy the rest. That's the main, you know, that is... You know, plan A of the deck. That's exactly what we want to be doing. I'm going to go through the creatures now. Um, we've got one hope for Girapur. It's just a 1-1 one, one flyer. It's an artifact. And uh, I may sacrifice it until the next turn. Target player who has dealt combat damage by hope of Girapur this turn can't cast non-creature spells. We're not going to use that that much, but it could be handy. Uh, the reason we are, have got this in the deck is because it's an artifact. It's cheap, and it's got flying, which is the evasion we need to get World Slayer in for damage. More evasion creatures. Squadron Hawk. It's just a 1-1 one, one for 2, but when it comes onto the battlefield, I may search for the rest of the Squadron Hawks in my deck. So this is good once I've got a quest for the Holy Relic down. I get to play one, fetch up the other ones, and just churn them out one after the other until I've got enough counters on my quest for the Holy Relic. It's also good post-World Slayer. I've got one, like, if I haven't played any and I've got one or two in my hand, I can just play it and then attach any equipments I have to the remaining Squadron Hawk. So it's good pre and post. Glintness Crane, it's a, another evasion creature, but when it enters the battlefield, I may look at the top four cards in my library, and I can put an artifact card from among them into my hand and the rest on the bottom of the library. So it's just a good value card. It's got evasion for attacking World Slayer too, and it also helps me find World Slayers or any other artifacts in my deck, which I do have a lot of. I've got four copies of Legion Conquist well, Conquistador. <laughs> I'm going to get that wrong a lot. And it's exactly the same as Squadron Hawk. I can just fetch out all of the uh, Legion Conquistadors uh, from my deck and put them onto the battlefield. It's just good with Quest of the Holy Relic. The only downside is it costs three and it doesn't have evasion. However, like Squadron Hawk, it's also good after World Slayer because I can refill uh, the battlefield very quickly. I've got four copies of Trophy Mage. It's kind of a bit like the second more copies of Glintness Cranes. When it enters the battlefield, I may search my library for an artifact card with converted mana cost free. I reveal it and put it into my hand and shuffle my library. I've also got two copies of Pilgrim's Eye. It's always nice to be able to fetch out a land. I can hold it in my hand for post World Slayer, so I've always got a land drop to make after I've done it. It's also got, like before, Evasion. And it is an artifact, so I can get it with a glint nest. And more importantly, it's three mana artifact, so I can get it with Trophy Mage. It's uh, a good catch all. I also can fetch well, a token copy of Brass Squire. Sometimes I'll have a World Slayer on the battlefield, but I just can't. Um, I just can't get a hit in. Like they keep uh, destroying my creature as it attacks or anything like that. It's good to have one copy of this, which I can fetch out of Trophy Mage, where I can just attach an equipment to a creature I control. Very handy. Okay, I do, other than Worlds there, have other artifact um, stuff I want to talk about. So, the main way of surviving World Slayer is by having stuff that's indestructible. So, I've got four copies 
have Dark Steel Ingos. This is our main way of having advantage in this deck. I can get it with a Trophy Mage, and it's indestructible, and I can add one mana of any color. No questions asked, which is great. So if I have two or three of these down, maybe, and a World Slayer hits them, I've got free land, they've got none. I've got that sort of advantage. It's very hard to come back from. I've also got three copies of Dark Steel Axe. Uh, it costs one, it's also indestructible, and it costs two to attach. And it's t it just adds two power to the creature that's attached to. So these are brilliant pre World Slayer just for you know blocking because a lot of our stuff has quite low power. We can you know block favorably, our glint nest will become a free free flyer. It's just good for putting off our opponent attacking. As well as post World Slayer, they will sit around and hopefully I'll have at least two lands left uh, with my Dark Steel Ingots. And I should be able to attach any creatures I play. Any, I should be able to attach to any creatures I play post World Slayer and just getting damage a lot quicker. You know, the clock's gonna be very slow and I've got a lot of time to rebuild, but I'm just playing one ones. So I need something that can press the opponent post World Slayer, and Dark Steel is exactly that. I've got one swift foot boots. Uh, this is good because one is quite cheap and only one to uh, cost two to put down and one to equip. But equipped creature has hexproof and haste. I was I could have put on um, put the greaves in here, but the problem is I can't have shroud. I need hexproof because I need to be attached to my own stuff. So this stops our token creature maybe being, you know, fatal pushed or something, and we can still get in with world slayer. It's very important that we have at least one creature that can't be blocked. So this is a way of around a lot of creature removal. We start, we can still get board wiped, but it's pretty good catch all. Okay, I've got one copy of Warhorn. This can be fetched out with Trophy Mage. This is our plan B. So if World Slayer is just not working, we've got a lot of stuff on the battlefield. We've got a lot of flyers. We can just play a Warhorn and we can just smash them to the face. Go the aggro route, and that's what that's there for. We've got a Whisper Silk Cloak. Uh, equipped creature can't be blocked and has Shroud. So we need a way of being able to get around you know, in the main deck. If someone plays a Lingering Souls or something like that, we need to be able to have our creature go un unblocked. Uh, the annoying thing is it does have Shroud. So we've got to attach the World Slayer first and then we've got to attach the Whisper Silk because if we do it the other way around, because it's got Shroud, it can't be a target of spells or abilities, even from me. So, it's it's not ideal, but it is a way around some archetypes in modern. So we'll just see how it goes. I haven't tested this deck, so it should be quite fun to play. I don't think it's going to do very well, but just being able to World Slayer people is fantastic. We'll go to the lands, because it's actually very important. As with Darksteel Ingot, we've also got Darksteel Citadels. Uh, they're indestructible lands, so post World Slayer, these will still sit on a battlefield and give us an advantage, which is very good. We've got four copies of Drowning Yard Temple. So if we've got two ingots down, one Dark Steel, we can pay free, and we can return these lands from our graveyard to the battlefield tapped. It's just a good way of restocking our lands quicker than our opponent. Obviously, we need coloured land, so we've got four copies of Flooded Strand and four copies of Hollowed Fountain, as well as one island and two planes, pretty standard. And we've got one Inventor's Fair. So at the beginning of your upkeep, if you control three or more artifacts, you gain one life. We're gonna have a lot of artifacts, so we are gonna gain life, and we can pay four to sacrifice it, search a library for an artifact card, reveal it, and put it into our hand. So it's just a good, you know, it's just a good advantage for any artifact decks in modern. This is a very nice little land. We're gonna to go to our sideboard now. So we've got two copies of Dusk and Dawn, well, Dusk till Dawn. Uh, destroy all creatures with power three or greater. That's on the Dusk side. So, I mean, all our creatures have power lower than three. So this is essentially a one-sided wrath for any of our big creatures. Plus, all of our creatures uh, have two or less power. Well, two or less power, so we can return them from the graveyard with the Dawn side, just in case we get wrathed, which is rather good. It's just a very good one-sided card for us, and we will be able to make advantage of it. Not to fear, we'll be able to take advantage of it. We've got two cop top copies of Tormod's Crypt. 
Uh, it's just the graveyard decks. Sacrifice it, exile cards from target players' graveyards. Self-explanatory. Got one welding jar. It's good against control. We can regenerate our weld slayer or any other artifact uh, creatures we want. It's just good against a lot of spot removal. We can just bring one in and it should be able to help us a lot. One pithy needle, needle just for planeswalkers really. Self-explanatory. Two copies of Damping Sphere for Tron. We don't want our lands being able to tap for more than one, so that's good. We've got two copies of Defense Grid, another two, cop uh, another two cards against Control. We play everything in our main phase, so this can slow down any counter decks if we manage to get this in underneath a Mana League, for example. Four Burn, we have Aethersphere, Aethersphere, Aethersphere? Oh, it doesn't matter, Harvester. And this is fetch upable with our, I keep saying Trinket Mage, it's not Trinket Mage. What's it called again? Trophy Mage, duh. So we can fetch that out of Trophy Mage and we can equip it for one, well not, accrue it for one, sorry. And it's just got lifelink. And that's what we really want against Burn. Also against Burn, we have one copy of Dragon's Claw. Whenever a player casts a red spell, you may gain one life. Self-explanatory again. We have one copy of Ratchet Bomb. Basically, Lingering Souls just ruins our life. So we need something that's just going to get rid of all Lingering Souls tokens, and that's an artifact, and that's what, exactly what Ratchet Bomb does. Exactly perfect for that. We have one copy of Cataclysmic Gear Hulk. This is also good against a lot of tokens deck. We can just have them pick whatever the best stuff is they want to keep, a one of each, and then just destroy the rest. If we have a Cataclysmic in hand, we can kind of play around it. So we can kind of manipulate our plays so we get the most value from this. Oh, and a 4-5 body with Vigilance. Not bad anyway, is it? And the last copy, uh, well, last card of, in our deck is Violent of Fasa. This is another one against control decks. Whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, you may draw a card. We've got a lot of flyers, we've got a lot of low-end creatures. We can draw a lot of cards with this if we manage to plonk this on a battlefield for a turn or two. It also has uh, two to, ca um, to tap and creatures your opponents control attack this turn available. That's sometimes relevant, but we're not. We're really there purely for card draw. Cool. Well, that's our deck for this week. Uh, you really should stick around for the matches. I've got a feeling they're going to be a lot of fun. I doubt I'm going to win loads, but if I do win with a World Slayer, it is worth tuning in for because you just don't see that in modern, and <laughs> I think it's going to be really fun. I would love to get a winning record with with this deck. I really doubt I will though. I reckon I'll be lucky to get a win. But I think just for the just for the fun factor it is worth playing and I really reckon you should tune in. If you like what I do, please subscribe, please like, please comment, all the usual stuff. It'd be nice to know that people like the stuff I'm doing. Okay, well, I'll see you in match number one, okay? Thank you very much. Bye.